Hello everyone, this is Terry with Futures.io, and as always, I would like to thank you for joining us today. It's my pleasure to welcome Jeremy Tang and Zachary White from Shark Indicators for today's webinar, Automated Trades That Mimic a Human Trader. Throughout the webinar, we have a question. Please feel free to type them into the questions box, and we'll do our best to answer them by the end of the event. This webinar will be recorded and posted on the Futures.io website within 48, 24 to 48 hours. If you're watching this afterwards please, on YouTube, please do us a favor and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the webinar. And as always, please feel free to share, comment, subscribe to our channel. It really helps us a lot. For trading news, events, and information, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter using at Futures.io. And now, without further delay, I will hand it over to Jeremy, and you'll get the pop-up to share your screen again. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Uh, um, it's actually quite uh, exciting to be, to be finally featured on uh, Futures.io. It's been a long time coming. My name is Jeremy Tang. I'm one of the co-founders and the chief architect of uh, Shark Indicators. And with me here today is Zach White, who is the product specialist and also a co-founder as well. Uh, in the chat, we have uh, Keith Wolf and Mike Bandy, who will do their best to answer your questions while we present. But we'll have a, a Q&A uh, at the end of the uh, presentation. Um, just a little bit about us. Uh, I, again, I I want to first of all thank kind of anybody, all you guys for for spending your time out of your day to to listen to us. Uh, today's presentation is going to be about uh, one of our uh, flagship products called Blackbird. So we're, you're going to see kind of a software demo. Uh, we're not kind of your typical uh, vendor in terms of selling a, uh, a particular trade system or whatnot. We're, we we kind of fashion ourselves as a software vendor. Uh, with who sells uh, tools uh, as opposed to trade systems. Um, in particular, our our tool actually works with the the NinjaTrader platform specifically. Okay, so to get into this, um, I think the best way for us to start is actually to to go on this a little bit of a talk about different styles of trading. In particular, this so-called spectrum of discretionary trading versus fully automated trading. I know a lot of you guys and futures.io are very interested uh, as just producing the, the forum in terms of automating aspects of your trading. How many of you guys here identify most with the fully discretionary trading side? Uh, you like to do everything manually? Um, you know, just go ahead and you know answer in the chat or the questions. Uh, or how many of you guys like to see yourself more kind of a full, like you want it, you're aiming towards uh, doing something fully automated, or maybe you're sort of in between, like in the middle there. Let's see if I can put my pointer up here, spotlight. Yeah, so let's, uh, you can see my little, my little cursor there. Um, we, again, we look at this as kind of like a, a spectrum, and I think a lot of you that we've, that have answered, or, or, you know, I can see that are they're, they're mostly on Actually, a lot of you guys are kind of all over the place, but most of you are kind of in the middle there. Um, and I think I just want to speak for a moment here about why we don't see too many people on the fully automated side. You know, a lot of it has to do with the, the barriers to entry there. there. There's some, you know, you either have to be a programmer yourself or have access to a program to do something like that. Um, or you can use, uh, as you're going to see, a, a software tool like ours. Uh, but there really isn't a, a lot out there um, that can help you with full automation. So that's why we don't see too many of those or even people that sort of aspire to that. But today I want to kind of impress upon you that it actually really doesn't matter uh, with regards to our software at least, uh, where you sit on the spectrum because uh, our software works the full kind of the full gamut in terms of if you like to be a full discretionary trader uh, or fully automated, somewhere in between blackbird will support you and enhance your it, the tools are designed to enhance your trading uh, regardless of where you sit on that spectrum uh, and of course uh, you can change it on the fly some days you may just feel like your your system works really well automated go for it uh, and say if the, the conditions change all of a sudden and, and you need to step in there and and take manual control you can you can do that on the fly on the fly no no problem at all so one of the core tenets of the design of our, our, our software is, is not to pigeonhole you into a particular tra trading style and you'll find with our company a lot of our uh, all our software products are designed to work around you not the other way around another thing that we've kind of noticed in the industry is a lot of emphasis tends to be about the the entry there's a lot of products a lot of uh, 
services out there that, that focus mainly on the, just the entry. And of course, Blackbird uh, is designed to enhance and, and uh, help you do precision entries, even in, in, in an automated sense, uh, as well as some pretty cool tools that, that help you in a, in a discretionary sense. Uh, but those of you that have been trading for some time probably know, you know that uh, that's only part of the equation, right? And there's the whole aspect of what do you do once you got your trades live? You know, how do you manage it? That's a really big component that's really missing uh, in a, in a lot of uh, products out there in, in 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 our in our space. And that's again the idea of managing your 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 targets, your, your stop losses, or even your entries uh, on the fly. And if you I'll get into this in a little bit, but uh, it's not quite just like a really good discretionary trader. It's for for those people, it's not quite as simple as just popping it on and and letting some sort of rudimentary uh, you know stop loss uh, uh, step up. You know they they do a lot more complicated things than that. Um, and and finally, another component that uh, we built in is more kind of the uh, the, the overarching bird's eye view. Uh, the risk management, the money management, that's also a very important aspect. Again, also uh, not 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 quite often do we see products sort of address that. And and certainly we don't see products that sort of have a full encompassing solution uh, that really, in our opinion, like it takes all of these components to make a really complete trade system. And if those of you that are really familiar with the NinjaTrader uh, platform and and the NinjaTrader ATM, which stands for their Automated Trade Management, which is is basically a kind of a rudimentary tool that allows you to to automate uh, very simple step ups uh, with your your stop losses. Um, that's kind of where we see it and how it fits within the spectrum of what Blackbird is capable of. So um, I want to sort of impress upon you uh, kind of how when we first built the software, what the core design uh, philosophy was and, and that was our goal was to make this this trader this trade management system be able to mimic what a human trader can do in an automated sense and on the surface that sounds you know maybe a, a fairly simplistic thing but when you really dig down deep and you and you and you, have you seen a human trader and how they how dynamic they are with managing their trade on the fly you start to realize there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. In particular, you know, if you if, once you enter, um, discretionary traders are known to study their indicators, look at the market, look at other time frames, do a whole host of other things of processing in their head to manage the actual trade and to move the stops and, and profit targets accordingly. You know, the volatility may spike. They're quickly, you know, if they widen it. They they can even do things like that. You know, we've seen all sorts of crazy stuff. I don't we call it crazy, but this is just the way discretionary traders trade. And and you, when you think about it, um, just having a simple step up, stop loss is just not adequate enough to to mimic a human trader. And that's a a, a big reason why a lot of uh, competent traders shy away from uh, automating a lot of their stuff is because the, 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 there's no software out there until a product like ours uh, that's able to sort of mimic what they can actually do in an automated sense. So I'm going to go through and just quickly talk a little bit about how Blackbird can help you with discretionary trading, semi-automated trading, and uh, fully automated trading. So just quickly, I'm going to, I'm going to blaze through a bunch of different uh, features that, that we've included in here for the, for the discretionary uh, trader. This is by no means an exhaustive list, um, but a couple things I want to highlight. Uh, the, the ability to create complex order entries and exit groups. Um, I'll show you a little picture and kind of what I mean in a second. Um, quickly break even and profit and, and do profit protection even under separate order groups as well. Um, we have this really cool uh, feature called, we call it trade fit. Uh, and I'll describe that in a second, how that helps you out. As well as the ability to, to quickly scale in, adjust things on the fly. We also have another tool called the dynamic planning. I'll get into that in a second as well. Um, uh, and then the kind of like, so, so we've really built kind of Blackbird uh, to really complement discretionary traders. So for example, uh, just say you've got a particular style of trading where you like to put on multiple types of contracts. Uh, you know, a typical example would be like, say you've got your 
uh, you've you got your risk kind of worked out uh, with with uh, a particular stop loss and, and profit target of uh, a certain amount, but then you kind of like to have a, a secondary contract that goes on that's that's sort of there to capture runners for large profits, and you, you, you maybe you want to have a, a slightly higher ratio, or sorry, lower ratio of those kind of contracts going on. You can certainly configure all that sort of thing uh, in, in Blackbird so that every time you press the go button, all these contracts just like just appear. Um, and then each one of these are configurable um, to, to the nth degree. Uh, this kind of gets into the, the whole idea of, of trade fit what I mentioned earlier is sort of you can imagine a scenario where you've, you've got this idea where I only want to risk you know a thousand dollars per trade or something to that degree uh, you can actually tell Blackbird look um, limit me to a thousand dollars per trade but then calculate you know based off my how, how, how wide my stops are uh, calculate how many contracts I need to go in with uh, and do that on the fly and and you can imagine that gets a a whole lot more complicated when you have several different stop losses at different distances and at different ratios to each other. Um, and then you can also specify things like, um, uh, you know, that you want a risk reward to ratio of X, Y, Z. Uh, Blackbird will crunch all these numbers on the fly uh, and do do all that instantly so that when you hit that go button, uh, your risk reward parameters are, are being met um, with your order set. Another thing that we found was pretty interesting is we would watch a lot of discretionary traders, especially the Ninja Trader platform, uh, when they put on a, um, a trade and they use the ATM. The first thing they would do is they'd have like three different contracts on or whatever number, right? And they put the stops really, really wide. But the idea is like they put the, the trade live and then they, they scramble, they, they, they take their mouse and they're like putting the, the stop losses and their, their profit targets where they're supposed to be and, and, and you know, uh, according to their their rules like you know um so that in other words they're, they're actually using live contracts and then they're then after the, the the placement the actual orders are submitted to the broker then they're actually adjusting the the, the stop losses and profit targets to where they actually need to be um that that is a little bit crazy we found so you know what we built into the, into blackboard is the idea that you can plan and visualize exactly where everything goes and 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 so in this little this little picture here you see that we've got a couple of flags there we call them and and someone's positioned a, a rather complex order set and and these aren't live trades this is sort of a visualization so that they can put everything where they need it to be and then hit the execute button and boom everything will just be submitted exactly where they they, they had uh, uh, pre-planned it so a much more sane way we think of doing things so let's move to the middle of the spectrum and talk a little bit more about the semi-automated uh, trading tools. So Blackbird takes it one step further. And, and from here, you can actually, from the semi-automated perspective, you can actually design those order sets to move and behave exactly how we talked about earlier, like a human trader. And we have some pretty complex logic. We call them triggers and actions, and those triggers um, can be built in. There's an unlimited number of these triggers that you can you can design into each in particular order or order set even, uh, and and you can do things like you can manipulate when it's placed, you can manipulate when they're cancelled and let's say removed, uh, you can manipulate where where they're going to be placed and how and what fashion they're going to be moved around. Uh, you can you can tie those movements to third party indicators like any indicator on your system, uh, or you can use the third party indicator. To, uh, to perform um, triggers as well, you know, say, uh, um, you know, so there's, there's a ton of flexibility. Um, and, and actually, let's just go through and show a little screenshot here, kind of what I mean. So this is an example of someone that's basically decided, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to put this limit entry close, uh, limit, so this limit entry at the close of the last bar. Uh, here you can select something like price in this case, but you can also select something like, you know, put it by an indicator or maybe a swing, a, a trade swing of some sort. Um, uh, you can you can base it kind of off anything and then you can offset it by a certain amount. So those of you probably familiar with like the idea of offsetting a, a stop loss by a certain ATR value, you can, you can offset by any arbitrary indicator, not just the ATR. Um, and here, and don't worry if you don't sort of get all of what's going on here. We also have a pretty extensive training uh, uh, 
that we offer as well. But to, just to give you a real quick taste of what's possible, um, you could actually con you can actually configure all sorts of different placement conditions. So in this case, uh, someone's con configured so this particular entry only comes in after the fifth bar, uh, and a close versus the SMA has 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 reached a certain value of some sort. So again, illustrating that you can use indicators themselves as well as uh, to 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 trigger certain actions. Um, and here's kind of a screen that basically shows that yeah, you can you can any indicator that's on your system uh, installed in NinjaTrader and and has plots for NinjaTrader can be used and piped into to Blackbird to to do all sorts of things. And that includes again driving triggers, placing uh, orders in certain uh, at certain prices. Uh, it also can be used for entry as well. So on the fully automated side. Uh, th this is the idea behind this is to um, actually let me just back up real quickly. I did want to mention the whole purpose behind the semi-automated stuff is is really like like this is a great way for for traders to 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 to, to rely on the computer for things that computers are really good at, and that includes like accuracy and speed. Like these are things like as a you know think computers are just excel at that kind of stuff, and then. Then you can use your brain and you can use your intuition uh, to do other things like you know um, to intuit entries if that's what you like to do. Uh, so semi-automated trading is is a really popular option for a lot of our customers because they can mix and match. They can have the computer again uh, handle a lot of stuff, uh, the heavy lifting of, of the nitty gritty stuff, and that requires maybe speed and agility, uh, but still using their intuition to trade. So uh, it's a great mix. Um, and it's just a great way to relieve stress. Honestly, like like having the computer handle all these uh, all those details, it's it it, it actually is a big burden uh, off the trader. Um, if you want to take it one step further and make it even less burdensome for you to trade, you know there needs to be kind of one extra step, and that's basically the money management, the risk management. And these are kind of like I, I would like characterize this as sort of the hedge fund level stuff in terms of you're managing the account now, not just the individual trades. And so. What I mean by that is you have the ability in, in Blackbird to, to set the number of max number of trades or the max number of consecutive wins or losses or the max number of losing and winning trades per day or the max profit. And so that's a great way to sort of like, it's almost like putting stop losses and a and a uh, profit target on your account. And speaking of, of that, uh, we do have a really neat feature here we call it the daily watermark. And that that's like a think of that like a not just a stop loss or a profit target for your account. Think of it as like a trailing stop loss for your account. The idea being that as you make more money throughout the day, you can have uh, Blackbird uh, sort of protect more and more of your profit. And you can even make it so that if you're about to to break and lose some money after you've made X dollars, say five hundred dollars, say, you can make it so that hey, I don't want to walk away. If I made five hundred dollars, I'm going to walk away. With, with no less than $300 of profit, you can tell it to do that, um, and you can actually have it break intra-trade, stop a trade, intra-trade to, to guarantee that amount, and you walk away a, a winner rather than a loser, because nothing's worse than like being up a couple hundred dollars or a thousand dollars and giving it all back, and then walking with a with a losing day. That's that's one of the worst feelings ever, I'm sure. Um, and the whole point of this, all this stuff, is really to just really smooth out your equity curve. Um, and that's again why hedge funds, hedge funds, and and whatnot, they use this kind of technique um, to manage their accounts. Uh, here's a little snapshot of the risk management. Um, you saw earlier, kind of, uh, th there's other settings as well, like uh, managing the amount of risk per trade. But this is uh, a risk reward ratio, um, uh, a little screen, and this is only again just a, one, one tiny screen of the whole thing uh, when it comes to risk management. Um, uh, Here's a, another kind of cool tool is that you can you can actually sort of tell Blackbird to only trade during certain times of the day uh, in, in this kind of a visualized scheduler. Uh, and this is great for um, avoiding like market reports or whatever. Maybe your, your maybe your trade system works on the market reports. You know, like you can restrict it to those time frames only. The really it's, the world's kind of your oyster. Um, and and this is a great way to to to, to restrict when the trades are allowed to go on uh, without affecting your chart uh, and using sort of the session templates that are built into Ninja Trader. So anyways, without further ado, I think what I'm going to do here at this point is, is pass it over to Zach, who's actually going to give you a live demo uh, of Blackbird. 
Jeremy and guys, give me a moment here while uh, I switch the screen sharing over to my screen. And there we go. All right. If one or one or two of you guys could just make sure you're seeing my screen now. Um, I mean, you should see uh, there's a chart in the background and um, I've got our website up here just to kind of introduce myself here. So, all right, thanks, thanks guys, cool. So, um, yeah, let me just introduce myself. Um, again, my name is Zach, and um, I am in charge of doing the training workshops for our software here. So, um, you know, so on our training workshops page, you know, I host a weekly uh, training day for both um, our Bloodhound product and our Blackbird product, right? So today we're going to show you Blackbird, um, and uh, yeah, and tomorrow there's going to be a Blackbird workshop. So every Friday there's a Blackbird workshop. Um, so um, so I'm bringing this up because you know we're going to try and get all your questions answered today. But you know if you do have further questions, you know about Blackbird's capabilities, what you can do for it. You guys are all welcome to sign up for this workshop. Um, and these workshops are a live environment so that you guys can ask your questions live and then I'll give you an answer right then and there. You know, that's what these workshops are all about is, you know, asking me, you know, how can I use the software to do this and do that, all right? So you guys are all welcome to, to join up, up there tomorrow, um, you know, if you have further questions um, about Blackbird here. Um, okay, so with that, let's jump into the de into the demo here. Um, so I get to have the most most of the fun here on the webinar, showing off the software and playing around with it. Um, so what I'm going to demonstrate here is kind of a, a semi-automated um, uh, example here of Blackbird. So I was looking at all the answers that you guys gave us right earlier when Jeremy had asked, you know, what type of trader are you? You know, are you discretionary, semi, or full auto? And, you know, it looks like the majority of answers are, um, you know, people are somewhere in between. So I'm thinking that means semi-automated, um, right? So maybe you're using like Ninja's ATM, something like that, you know, which, you know, offers some automation into, um, you know, into your um, trailing stop losses. Um, and then there's a bunch of answers where people, you know, want to go into like semi-auto um, and a couple of people want to go into full auto as well here. Um, yeah, so again, you know, this is going to demonstrate kind of like some semi-automated and basically adding some like smarter intelligence um, into your, into managing your profit targets um, and your stop losses here. Right. So let me um, give you a heads up of what's on the chart here, right? So this first indicator here, all the dots, um, you guys are probably familiar with this. This is the um, super trend indicator um, from Harry, or Fat Tails, actually. Yeah, his screen name is Fat Tails on Futures IO. So this is one of his indicators, the super trend. Um, Oh, uh, there you go. I actually brought up the indicator list. You know, so it's the AMA super trend. And then the other can, the other indicator is the ADX VMA. So, right, so this line is the ADX VMA. And I'm sure most of you guys have probably seen this and recognize it right off the bat, right? So what I'm going to do, um, so what, what we have here is, let's see here. I'm going to show you a couple of short trades here. And so to, to kind of yeah set the stage here, so um, I've got an entry order here that's that's going to be following the ADX VMA indicator, right? Kind of getting into a pullback trade. You know, so this would be an example of how you could attach one of your entry orders to an indicator. You know, some kind of moving average. You know, if you're into you know doing kind of like pullback um, entry type of trades, right? Um, and then the stop loss. Well, the stop loss is going to be based on the super trend, but it's not just going to be a dummy stop loss following 
the super trend. You know, there's some more intelligence kind of built into it. And um, I'll kind of explain that, you know, as the demonstration goes along. Um, and then the profit target as well. So uh, the profit target, right, it's going to start off as a, um, let me get this going here. Profit target is going to start off as a five ATR, but it also has some intelligence kind of built into it. Um, and again, I'll kind of explain that here in just a moment here. So, oh, and also what you're seeing right now is um, the dynamic planner that Jeremy had just talked about earlier in a previous PowerPoint here, um, right? So what, uh, so what this dynamic planner allows you to do is basically manually manage where you want your stops, your profits, and your entry orders before executing live. So you might notice that these flags look a little translucent like this. You can see this entry order flag. You can actually see the indicators behind it and the bars behind it, right? It's translucent. So that's telling you that this is not a live order. This is uh, a planning stage, right? So we're in the dynamic planner um, with these flags here. So, all right, so let's see here. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, let me turn off the dynamic planner and I'm gonna place a short trade here. And so simple enough here, let's kind of speed this up a little bit. So simply, you know, we'll, we'll, you'll see, you know, the entry order is just gonna follow the ADX VMA until the market makes a little pullback and picks it up. So while we're waiting for that, let me kind of explain some of the uh, key things, you know, that Blackbird um, is doing with this entry order here. So let's first, let's take a look at the name here. So, right, I placed a short order, so obviously this is a sell. And then you'll notice the name, it says auto select. So this is, a, I think, a unique feature that only Blackbird has. Um, and here, let's kind of slow this down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up, you know, this is Blackbird's interface. So if we take a look at the entry order, right, the type is either a stop or a limit. Right, it says stop, you know, slash limit. And so, and, and also the enable auto order type selection is enabled. So what that's doing is with this enabled, Blackbird is automatically determining whether you need a stop entry or a limit order entry based on where you placed your order as compared to where the market is, right? So if we're going short, above the market, then this needs to be a limit order. But let's say if I placed a long trade above the market, well, then this would need to be a stop order, right? And Blackbird will automatically decide that for you there. All right. So, all right, so let's cancel that. Um, and then further down along the name here, right, we can see that it says the AMA, ADX, VMA, you know, so basically, you know, it's telling us that, um, our entry order is following the ADX, you know, VMA indicator here. So let's see here. And um, actually I need to speed this along here a little bit more here. So this order um, is gonna get picked up here at 909. So let's kind of get that, get that filled here. And then we can take a look at the profit targets um, and the stop loss, and then I can uh, go into detail and explain what's going on there with the profit targets and the stop losses there. So, all right, let's get speed this up a little bit more. And this was from yesterday. If you guys are curious, this market replay here is from yesterday. All right, there we go. Let's slow this down a little bit. There, actually. I got plenty of time here, so I'll play that at 10x. Um, okay, so the um, so the idea for this stop loss here actually came from a customer in one of those workshops, right, that I just um, told you about here. And so the customer was, you know, wanting to implement the uh, super trend indicator, you know, into his um, trading style here. And actually, I'm gonna slow this down a little bit. Um, but you know, the one thing he noticed about the super trend. And you know, if you've ever traded, you know the the market loves to go stop hunting, so to speak, right? And so you know, if you're using an indicator, you know, 
for trailing your your stop losses, you know, you know it you'll notice that quite often a wick will come off and pick off your stop loss, right? Market loves to come up, hit your stop loss by a tick or two, you know, and then move off, you know, back in the direction of the trend. So this customer was trying to, you know, find a solution to alleviate these wicks, you know, from picking off his stomp loss. So, you know, what the obvious thing is, well, create a buffer zone between your indicator and your stomp loss. So that's what you're seeing right here is there's a one ATR buffer between the indicator and the stop loss, right? So we can see as, right, as the super trend goes down, right, the stop loss goes down, but it has this buffer zone, right? Well, now that's like, well, all that's doing is just increasing your stop loss, but wait, there's more. <laughs> so there is more intelligence in the stop loss than just widening your stop loss here. And I'm actually gonna get to that here uh, in just a moment on the second part of my demonstration. I'll kind of go into more detail as to, you know, what what is, made the stop loss a little a little better a little smarter here so uh, but for now i want to talk about the profit target here uh, because yeah this first part is actually going to demonstrate the profit target automatically moving on its own here right so as we can see right now this profit target you know it start it starts off at as a 5 atr right a very pretty lofty you know profit target there but but what this profit target is going to do is let's go back to the you know to these wicks here hitting the super trend right so again if you've ever used the super trend you'll you'll note that you know if price you know gets around to hitting the super trend or approaching it you know quite often that's a clue that you know this pullback or maybe even the trend might be coming to an end right so what I've done is I've what I've designed Blackbird to do is when these wicks touch the super trend to that you know basically cluing us in that maybe the trend's going to come to an end. What I've done is the profit target is going to move up and it's going to move up and it's going to match the ADX VMA, right? So if price comes up here, comes up here to the super trend and touches it then our profit target is going to pull up to the ADX VMA, right, in hopes that, you know, maybe, you know, as we can see, like, back over here, right, price comes up, touches that super trend, but then it goes back down to the ADX VMA, right? You know, price is always oscillating back and forth. So hopefully, if we pull our profit target in, you know, the market will oscillate, you know, back down and hit that profit target before hitting the stop loss, right? So we can see in this example, you know, market moved down. So it would have filled our profit target before, you know, going back, back up and hitting that stop loss, right? So let's see here at about 9.33. So in a few more minutes, let's speed this up a little bit. So what's gonna happen, actually you can see right there, that, that bar right there just broke um, yeah, is breaking and touching the super trend indicator, right? So that's our condition. So once this bar closes, bingo, there it goes. It just closed. So let me pause this for a sec here. I'll slow this down a little bit, right? So right there, that wick touched the super trend. And so that was our condition that, you know what? We may not get our full profit target out of this trade. So our Profit target automatically moved up, you know, to the ADX VMA. Of course, you can and you can tell the profit target to move up, you know, to any location that you want, you know, to so that it matches your trading style. You know, if we wanted to, you know, we could base the profit target. We could base it off of the super trends, you know, price. Um, we could take some other moving average. You know, or we could just say, you know, take the price of the bar and then add some kind of offset to it. You know, whether it just be 10 ticks or maybe a, a one ATR, you know, so you can fully customize 
the location of where you want your profit target to go, you know, based on some kind of warning condition that, you know, maybe the trend's going to come to an end here. But for this demonstration, you know, it was just nice and clean and easy to see our profit target moving to the ADX BMA here. And then um, here shortly, uh, you know, here shortly, you know, we're, we're now just kind of waiting to see what's the market going to do, you know? So we've kind of, um, you know, we have our stop loss prepared. We have our profit target prepared, you know, so we basically kind of um, tightened everything up you know, waiting to see what's the market going to do. And of course, you know, the hopes is that we would much rather get that profit target hit, you know, obviously versus the stop loss here. And so let's see, I'm going to have to speed this. Oh, now maybe play it. There we go. Turn it back on. All right. So turning it back on. And of course, you know, spoiler alert, the market is going to come down and hit this profit target here. Right. But first, yeah, first we can see the market is still kind of, you know, playing around, toying around with our super trend, you know, kind of give us a little tease, but hopefully there's enough volatility, you know, um, in the market right now that will get this profit target hit, you know, before the stop loss, you know, or versus the stop loss, I should say. So let's see here. So let's, let's speed this up a little bit more. And yeah, let me just kind of speed this up a tad bit more. There we go. All right, so good. All right, so perfect, right? That's the hopes when you're trading is, you know, get those profit targets hit. You know, even if your stop loss is in a profitable position, you know, it it's obviously, it's still better to get those profit targets hit because that, you know, that way you can scratch out, you know, more profit within that trade versus stop losses versus a profitable stop loss getting hit, right? So, all right, so there's um, kind of the demo number one there, showing, you know, kind of a semi-automated profit target. And then here in just a moment, um, I'm gonna place another short trade. And let me speed this up a little bit. And so in this next part, I'm gonna demonstrate, um, you know, the intelligence that we kind of, that um, I built into the stop loss here. So I kind of explained part of it, you know, is we've got this kind of gap here. Oh, let me go short, there we go. Let me slow this down a little bit. And let's see. There, speed this up. Right. So kind of going back to the stop loss, right? I've already kind of explained that, you know, our Stop loss is protected from these wicks here. Um, but of course, you know, nobody wants to take a wider stop loss here. So the stop loss, it will close the trade out sooner than getting the stop loss hit. Um, and as soon as we get this filled here, I'll explain what that is in more detail here. So all right, come on. Yeah, I mean speed this up and get that order filled. There we go. Okay. So, yeah. So going into details of this stop loss here, if you look at the name, right, the stop loss starts off as a three ATR simple stop loss, right? And, you know, why do we need to start the stop loss off at a three ATR, you know, versus just having it, um, automatically go to the super trend. Well, you know, what if you, what if I decided to take a long trade here? Well, the super trend's on the wrong side of the market, right? So you can't, you can't place your stop loss on the super trend if it's on the wrong side of the market, right? So, you know, so as, um, um, so to, um, what, to, to um, alleviate that problem, our stop loss, just starts off somewhere, you know, it's just a, a, a simple, you know, offset from your entry price. And then what Blackbird does is Blackbird, you know, compares price to the super trend indicator. And, you know, and once, once we know that the super trend indicator is on the correct side of the market, 
then our stop loss can start trailing the uh, the indicator there, right? Okay, so let's see here. Let's so right now again we have this one ATR offset from the indicator, and uh, let's see here when. Uh, okay, I need to speed things up a little bit. Because at 10:54, um, that's when the market is going to start um, hitting the super trend indicator, right? And then that's when I can explain what's going on here. So, all right. Well, so while we're waiting for this, right? So, so uh, let's you know, let's kind of zoom in here a little bit. There we go. Right. So we've got this one ATR spacing between the indicator and the stop loss here. And I'm actually, what I want to do here is I'm going to use this line to illustrate where the stop loss is, where it is right now versus where the trade is going to get closed out, right? So, so what's going to happen is, um, you know, the market's going to close on the other side of the indicator, right? And that's going to be our condition. And let's see. Uh, no, not quite yet. Well, so it, when, the, when the market closes on the other side of the super trend, that is our condition to actually close the trade out, right? So with this buffer area, we don't have to worry about the wicks picking that stop loss off. But what happens if the market closes on the other side of the indicator? Well, that is the condition, you know, that this customer wanted to say, okay, the trade is over with, the trade is done, right? So we protected the stop loss from these wicks, but again, when the market closes on the other side of the indicator, that's when the trade is done. And so just close the trade out, right? So doing that by closing the trade out, when the market closes over here, we don't take this full stop loss, right? So the trade's gonna get closed out, you know, wherever the market, wherever the bar closes at, you know, so that way it minimizes that full stop loss here. And we'll see that here. And we're almost there. Let's see here, let's speed this up just a tad bit. All right, just a couple more seconds. And that bar is going to close. And there we go. That bar just closed there. So here, let's pause this for a moment. Right. So remember, I drew this line here. Uh, I drew that line right to illustrate where to illustrate where the prop where the stop loss was. But as soon as this bar, let's stretch this out a little bit. But as soon as right this bar closed on the other side of the super trend. Right. That's when, you know, basically we say, OK, the trade was over. And so we closed the trade out so we can see the trade was closed out down here, not up here where that stop loss was. Right. So we had a protective stop loss, you know, in case the market goes crazy. Now, I'm sure you guys have all seen that, that you know, sometimes there's news events that come out where the market just goes ballistic and it's moving like in millisecond speed, right? So there's, you know, so there's at least a, a, you know, a stop loss in place, you know, to protect you against that huge market volatility. But, uh, right, but under normal trading conditions, um, you know, if if the market closes on the other side, then, then we can close that trade out. And so we can see that we're gonna get this, you know, much better closing price than if we waited for that stop loss to get hit. So we got to right there. So, um, and uh, yeah, oh, let me take a quick moment here just to kind of show you what's under the hood here. Um, so the blue order, that's our entry order, right? And of course you can customize these colors to whatever you want. So, you know, if you don't want blue for your entry, you know, you can go in here and customize the orders for those flags. Um, but what is what's doing all the work is this trailing rule here. So this is what makes Blackbird 
so flexible and so unique in the industry that you know there's no canned trailing rules here there's nothing canned it's um it's a uh, what kind of a um a clean chalkboard and so it's you know it's its purpose blackbird's purpose is for you to take your ideas and implement them into blackbird so that way blackbird's trading based on your system based on your style of trading not something that we've already cooked up and pre-canned into the system right so this trading role here you know as i named it it's just following the adx vma pretty simple right so and then down here with the profit target um again it just took one simple trailing rule here um you know so we have these trigger conditions right so these trigger conditions is what looks for the wick breaking the super trend right so if a bar wick you now touches the super trend then that's that's our condition to pull that profit target in and again as i mentioned you can fully customize where you want that profit target to go you know and so here we can see i told you know i told blackbird okay move the profit target to the adx vma and simply put um but if i wanted to i could tell blackbird okay you know use the adx vma but also um oh and it has a one tick offset as well that's right a one tick offset so i wanted to i could say okay take the adx vma and then add a couple of extra ticks of profit to the ADX VMA. So I can fully customize that if I wanted to. Right. Or I could use um, an ATR. And I could say, okay, take the ADX VMA and add one ATR, um, right? Which is what I did with the stop loss. So yeah, let me go and show the, the stop loss here. So the stop loss, that only took two trailing rules, right? So we have our, our basic trailing rule here, which is just, you know, trail the super trend, right? Trail the super trend. And so what that is doing, right? So the way I created this little buffer zone between the indicator and the stop loss is, right? I took the super trend indicator and I added an offset, an ATR, a negative, well, actually we took short trades, so it was a positive one ATR offset from the super trend indicator. So that's how I was able to create that buffer. And then the other trading rule here, the one that says flatten on super trend U11 break, right? So it, when the market breaks that super trend, this is the trailing rule that flattens the position, right? So we can see right here under action, it just says flatten the position, right? So pretty straightforward. So, and in the triggers, you know, that's where I said, you know, that's where I um, told Blackbird, okay, you know, if the market closes on the wrong side of the mark, uh, wrong side of the indicator, then flatten that position, right? So just two simple trailing rules, you know, was able to build in, you know, that smarter kind of trailing stop loss. And with one simple trailing rule, I was able to build kind of a smarter profit target, you know, so that way, you know, you don't just hope for the best and hope your profit targets get hit. But, you know, if you see certain market conditions, you know, that are kind of cluing you in or giving you some, you know, probabilities that maybe you're not going to, you know, get your full profit out of that trade, at least try and, you know, grab some of the profit out of that trade. Right. And so that just took one, one simple trailing rule there. So, um, all right. Well, with that, guys, um, that kind of concludes my demonstration there. And so I'm going to turn it back over to Jeremy, and then I'm sure we'll get to some Q&A here in just a moment. Okie doke. Says, right. Thanks, Zach, uh, for that uh, that wonderful demo there. And this is, of course, just like what Zach shows you. It's just kind of touching the surface of what's possible with Blackbird. I want to just quickly summarize some of the features that we talked about and perhaps some of them that you actually saw. Um, of course, this is by no means an exhaustive, exhaustive list, but some of the highlights include that the ability to, uh, as you saw or we discussed, is like the ability to have different kind of entries 
to support market limit and stop limit entries. And um, one of the we're one of the few software that I'm not really sure if there's to be honest, if there's any other ones that you can actually move the entries around in a programmatic sense. Uh, they're just as flexible as the, the, the targets and the stop losses. Um, as we talked about before, you could plug in any kind of indicator to to enhance or to actually uh, make those calculations for your placement uh, as well as use them to drive logic and triggers. Um, we talked and showed a lot about the, a, lot, a lot of the discretionary controls available uh, in Blackboard, especially the, the, the position sizing, the dynamic planning that you saw earlier. Then of course we have um, more kind of management level features like scheduling and daily account limits. Um, so what we've kind of done is like, is, uh, you know, we looked at kind of what's out there. And uh, a lot of software, and there's, there really isn't much in terms of a, a trade designers, a trade intelligent trade managers like like ours. Um, but uh, um, we have seen a couple uh, products out there that that tend to do things like give you three or four choices of kind of canned indicators that, that maybe you can trail your stop loss by or something like rudimentary like that. Um, a lot of these softwares we find kind of go for you know the three thousand some odd mark. Um, in, in, in some cases, uh, or even uh, maybe slightly lower. But uh, one of the things that we kind of pride ourselves in is, is we, we sort of have a, a business model where we, we, we like to just get our stuff out there um, at, a, at the most economical kind of price as possible. Our mandate, of course, is, is, is trying to um, allow as many people to enjoy sophisticated trading tools as possible. Um, we support both NinjaTrader 8 and 7, 7 and 8, I should say, and we've we've been around since uh, about 2012, so I know this is kind of the first time for us uh, being on, on futures.io, um, but we've been around for quite a while. In fact, uh, if I recall, Zach and I, I think we met on, it was, it was at the time, of course, called Big Mike's, uh, and if I recall, it, it was this, it was actually futures.io uh, that where we actually first established contact with each other. So. Um, really, it's uh, if it weren't for for this uh, this website and this forum, um, you know, our company might not be either exist or it wouldn't be where it is today. That's for sure. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, we all, we definitely owe uh, Big Mike and and uh, the people at Futures IO a great thanks for that and having this this kind of community. Um, it's really you know it's really helped us and and uh, made us what we are today. So. Um, we have thousands of users. Our business model is really about proving, improving our software continuously. We're always adding new features, and, and uh, that's really fun because that's again that's what gets us up in the morning is, is creating these really cool tools for you guys. Um, we also stand by our product, uh, and we have a basically a guarantee. If you don't like it, then you know you, you can return it, and, and we don't have any problem with that. And it's, and it's because again we we really stand by the quality of our product. Um, we we offer our our, our software for fourteen ninety five. Uh, it's a very competitive price, especially in this kind of industry, uh, and for what it's capable of doing. But you know, this is our first time here in in uh, at Futures.io, and th so those of you that are kind of that are familiar with us, and so this is kind of the, you know the, the offer part of the presentation. But um, those of you guys that have been following Shark Indicators for a while, you, you know there's only we we do discount our software, but only a couple times a year. Um, you know, we're not kind of these, one of these kind of companies that sort of gets in the habit of doing it all the time. Um, so what we're going to do just, just for January and, uh, you know, just sort of a special thing because this is kind of the inaugural uh, presentation for futures.io is so we're going to knock down, knock it down to 90, 995 for you guys. And um, we're also going to, I'm going to talk about a, a kind of a side product that's sort of complementary to Blackbird. Um, we call these the trade management packs. Uh, and these are kind of, these are great little um, pre-done templates, uh, uh, configurations of Blackbird. And we've, we've sort of grouped them together according to the style of trading. So for example, we've got a couple thing, a couple templates pre-built for you. Uh, we call it the Mighty Scalpers pack. And these are great for kind of those uh, if your if your trade style tends to be very uh, like a scalping type focused trade, um, you know where you're you're in and out in a relatively quick and, sh and small 
with a small amount of profit and the idea is having a, a lot of wins um, and very few losses. Uh, we've, we've built some templates to, this is how, you know, uh, an example of how you'd may, you might want to set up Blackbird to do that. Um, and these are great for just getting you off the, the uh, you know, getting you like hitting the ground running. Um, and you can just trade these out of the box or you can use them as examples uh, to, to tailor to, to, to more like what you want. Um, you know, we have another one called the Bollinger Spike. These ones are great for playing the, the Bollinger Bands and trailing your stop losses uh, by the band itself. Uh, and you can imagine that you, if you take these, if you take these, uh, these, these, these pre-built um, packages, you can actually plug your own indicator in there instead if you, if you prefer. Uh, that's a great way again to, to uh, uh, a great way for you to just get started. Um, as well as this is one, this one's on the, the, uh, the Keltner channel, uh, and this is a great little template that demonstrates how you can jump from channel to channel. Um, and we generally uh, offer these for, and it's $14.95 for Blackbird, but we generally offer these for between $200 to $300. And what we're going to do is kind of like a little special, a bundle, uh, include these packs, and that way, again, you'll have everything you need to just hit the ground running with the main flagship flagship software, but also with uh, these packages, these packs included. And if you were to buy this all kind of separately, it would cost you about a little over two thousand and a quarter. Uh, but we're going to knock that down to eleven ninety five, which is actually less than the price of Blackbird itself. Um, it's about fifty percent off when you when you look at it. Uh, and so, actually, on my next slide, we're going to show you kind of what we're also going to do here is if, for those of you that actually already own uh, Blackbird, we're going to actually uh, let you have the, the trade management packs there for 245, which is also some savings. But um, these are kind of the, the two bundles that we're or rather the two offers that we're, we're looking at for. Uh, we're going to keep keep open to the end of January. Um, so, yeah, just we, we want to kind of do this because, you know, this is a, a great way for us to sort of kick off our relationship with futures.io. Uh, and for you guys to get into our, our product line and uh, hopefully generate some discussion and some collaboration on, on Futures IO, which is you know always something great we want to see. Um, so we're going to keep that open until January 31st. And if you took your web browser and just went to our website, uh, just to be sure, you should come up with basically an offer page that looks like that. So again, we're going to we're going to keep that open until the end of the month there. Um, but yeah, that basically concludes our presentation for today. And uh, this will be a good time now to, to break into a, a basic Q&A. And those of you that are um, can't stay uh, you know, past this, uh, this time, uh, I do want to point out again, as Zach mentioned, we do have a uh, workshop that's going to be running tomorrow. It's going to be an open Q&A and workshop where you can just have your questions answered live. A lot of our, our customers actually use that service um, to, uh, uh, to maybe have a system in mind that they'd like to see implemented. Uh, they can, they can, you can actually suggest it to Zach to, to try to build it live, written. so you can see how it's done. It's a fantastic little resource. Um, uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's break now into questions. See if we got any here. Let me just pop that down there so you can see the URL. All right, yeah, Jeremy, I can see we've got a couple of, um, uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of questions. Uh, actually, one of them was for Bloodhound. Um, but we do have a Blackbird here. So JHM was asking, can you show um, how to set a trailing stop loss at one tick below the previous bar's low or high. So yeah, I can definitely do that. Um, so before I switch over the screen here, just want to point out everybody that uh, we've got the link in the chat window for the uh, sales page that you see on Jeremy's, uh, that you see right now that Jeremy has up. Right, so if you want to get to that page that Jeremy has up, there's a link in the chat window there. 
All right. So, uh, and to answer the kind of to hand, answer the yeah you know, this the Q and A questions here, I'm going to have to switch over to my screen here. So, all right, let's switch that over. There we go. All right, good. You guys can see my screen now here. All right, yeah, so to, you know, if you want your stop loss, basically trail, um, and uh, here, let's see, let's get a line here. Let's say you want your stop loss to kind of trail, you know, one tick um, behind the previous bar's low, and let's get that there, something like that, stepping up. Yeah, pretty quick and easy to do. So um, let's see here. So um, let me just create another order set here. Um, so let's see, let's just create a mark order. So let me just create a new stop loss here to show you how to do that. Um, so if you just want a simple fixed uh, stop loss at um, the, there you go, previous bar, low high. So you can see that when you're creating a, an order here, there's you know some some very common uh, settings here you know from this quick quick list menu here. So you can just quickly create something here. And so with stop losses here, you know there's definitely a, lots of different uh, ways that traders kind of set their stop losses. So there's more options available here, but we can see there's a previous bar low or high price, and there's a fixed one. And then if you want trailing so that your stop loss, you know, steps up as the price goes higher and the low price goes higher, right? We can go down here to trailing and there you go. There's a previous bar high, low trailing option here. So I will just, I'll click on that. There you go. It created my stop loss there. So the initial placement, right, of my stop loss is going to be either the, the low price, right? So if you're in a long trade, it's gonna be the low price. And if you're in a short trade, it's gonna be the high price, right? And then we could just simply add a negative one tick. So it's one tick below the low. And, right, so there's the initial place. And then for the trailing, you know, if you wanna, and so you can see that the initial placement, right, is completely independent of the trailing here. So that way, you know, that builds in, you know, the maximum amount of flexibility here that you, um, for controlling your orders here. So, and so then, you know, with, uh, in the trailing here, I can, I can just go in and do the same thing here. So we can see, right, the action is what moves the order. And I could just put in a negative one tick offset, right? Because we can already see that it's going to be following the, the low. So, so forth, right? There you go. It was just simply, it was that easy. Just two adjustments and it's one tick below the low for a trailing stop loss. All right. So something else that uh, I kind of commonly get asked is uh, people want to trail the lowest low of say something like the last three bars, right? So let's say you want to take a look at the last three bars and use the lowest low of the last three bars. Well, that's easy as well. I just need to adjust my look back period so that it's looking back on three bars. And then I want to use the minimum value, right? So I can, so if I want, so I have a, um, some options here. I could use the max value. So that would be the highest low of the last three bars. Or I could take the average, so I can average the three bars, the low prices of the three bars together, um, you know, or I can use the minimum value, which would be the lowest low of the last three bars, you know, so again, a ton of flexibility built in here, so that way you can get the trailing customized the way that you want it. Right. So, um, yeah, all right, so there we go. Uh, that was, again, that was what, LM, no, JMH. That asked that question. So, okay, we do have a couple of questions about uh, Bloodhound discounts. Um, 
I think what we'll do at this point is just if, if you're interested in the full uh, package with Bloodhound as well, just contact us directly at sales at sharkindicators.com and we'll work something out with you. Yeah. Let's see. Um, I had answered this in the Q&A board, but AJ had asked, can I interface a Python AI, you know, or, or you know, some kind of algorithm, Python algorithm model into Blackbird? Um, and yes, you can, but of course, first you need to get your Python code, you know, ported into NinjaTrader first. So you'll need some kind of interface. And you know, most likely, AJ, I, I imagine the way you've got your Python stuff into NinjaTraders, you're, you know, you probably created some kind of, um, yeah. Let me cancel this here. Uh, so this is getting a bit technical, guys. But AJ, you probably have created some kind of indicator, right? That that will act as an interface, you know, from NinjaTrader to your Python code, you know. So um, if you haven't, that's basically what you need is, you know, indicators are very flexible with NinjaTrader. And so you can have an indicator, you know, um, interface with, you know, some other, you know, code base there. And then to get Blackbird back or, yeah, Blackbird back open, you know, so depending on what you're doing with your Python code. So if you're using that for, say, like entry signals, then up here, Right. So what I demonstrated for you was, you know, I was manually placing a short order, um, you know, so I, that was a semi audit. But if you want to make build a full auto trader, well, you know, the, the missing ingredient here, the missing piece was a trade signal. So the signals, you know, this is where you implement your trade signals. Um, so if you have some kind of, you know, AI um, type of program here. You know, if you can implement that into an indicator, then you can use any, you know, third party indicator to provide, you know, that that provides trade signals. And then you can hook that right into Blackbird. And so Blackbird would be executing trades based on your indicators, trade signals like that. So um, but at the same time, you know, Blackbird's not or not limited to that, Blackbird can do a lot more. So if you want, you know, if your Python code also kind of gives you a heads up as to when you maybe should be tightening your stop loss or tightening your profit targets, you know, you can do that too. So like if I go into the profit targets, you know, I can add a trailing roll here. And then within here, I can bring that indicator into the trailing rules and use the indicators output, you know, to control what's going to happen to my profit target. All right. So there's lots of ways that you can mix and match there, AJ. Just all depends on, you know, on what your approach is. Yeah. All right. Let's see who's. Yeah. I'll just quickly add. Um... Just to be clear, like like uh, Python directly is not supported in NinjaTrader, uh, so you have kind of two options. You you can either convert your Python code to NinjaScript, uh, which is you know depending on your skill level is you know it depends on how complicated your Python code actually is, but depending on your skill level, that's that's relatively easy. C Sharp is uh, a very flexible language. Um, or else if you have a ninja script uh, built that can somehow interface or read the Python output output from, from Python that also works as well. Um, all right. All right, so let's see. Um, yeah, we always get this question here. Richard um, is asking, does the package offer include the features just demonstrated? Um, well, the features that were just demonstrated here, Richard, you know, are basically a part of Blackbird. You know, it just needs to be coded in. But, but yes, um, this, uh, if you look up here on the top here, 
you can see that you know what I demonstrated I saved it to a file right so when you design something with Blackbird right you save it to a file so that you can load it up later right just kind of like when you you know when you build a spreadsheet in Excel right you save it to a file so you can open up that Excel file later well right same thing with our software when you you know build something and design something within our software you can save it to a file so that way you can load it up later or you can pass it to your buddies your trading buddies as well right so you know like you and your trading buddies can get together you know and design stuff you know and share your work um you know share these files amongst each other there so yeah so we will put this this file here uh, you know i called it futures IO demo 2020 here. So we will um, post this this file here on uh, that sales page. So yeah, we we haven't had the time to do that yet, but we'll get this file uploaded on that sales page as soon as possible. Right. Uh, and you can always email our support, right? You can always go to our email us at support at sharkindicators.com and ask us for the futures IO demo file and we can give that to you as well. So, yeah, um, you know, we've kind of learned that there's there's always customers asking for these files here whenever we do a webinar demonstration. So, um, so we know that, you know, we always make these files available to you guys. So, <laughs> you bet, that way you guys can play around with it and, uh, you know, use it as a learning tool um, as well, so. Yeah, let me cancel that. That way I, I can undo anything I've done here. Yeah, we've got a pretty, pretty uh, you know, the, I, I imagine the the, uh, the crowd from Futures IO are very sophisticated, um, you know, as such. So we, we don't see too many questions. Uh, yeah, which is which is actually uh, fairly unusual. So we're just kind of bombarded with yeah. uh, a lot of uh, fairly basic questions. but. Uh, Right. Yeah, let me just remind you guys. So I'm sure, you know, usually questions are kind of hard to come up with during a webinar, but always after you watch something, that's when the questions start to flow into your mind. So let me just, you know, reiterate again, guys, that, um, you know, if you come up with a question, you know, afterwards, you can always sign up for tomorrow's workshop, right? So you just go, go to our site, go to support and the training workshops there. And then down here underneath the schedule, right? This is where you can sign up for the Blackbird uh, workshop there. And that's where you guys can ask your questions and get further training on using Blackbird. Okay. So anybody can sign up for this. So, All right. And yeah, looks like that's kind of it for the questions. This was an easy one, guys. Great. All right, yeah, that's um, probably the, the, the shortest Q&A period we've ever had, but uh, that works out, like, like, like Zach said, if you've got any more, if something comes to mind, just just uh, feel free to, to attend the workshop. It's, it's free. Oh, we do have somebody just coming in here. Do you have a uh, contact slide, or can you show something with your email so if somebody's watching this later on YouTube, they can get in contact? Contact with yep, right here. So on our website, you can go to support, and there's a contact page right there for us. Perfect. And of course, I'm sure Keith or Mike can type in our email address into the chat window there as well. That way, you guys can get our support email address. There we go. Yeah, Keith just typed in our support email address, you know, but uh, if you forget that, just remember, you can always go to our website, go to support, and there's a contact page right down there. And um, there you go. You can just you know, email us this way. We, we do have a question that just came in the last minute there about uh, maybe exiting a trade uh, on a specific specific bar pattern, like like a doji or something like that. Like a doji. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Cancel. Yeah, so, um, you know, so just keep in mind that, you know, we, we can do something simple like that for sure. Um, you know, but just keep in mind that, you know, Blackbird's not a, a pattern finding indicator. Um, so if you're looking for like a sophisticated pattern, 
you know, you would want an indicator that's more, you know, that's designed for finding, you know, bar patterns. But a doji is very simple, um, yeah, very simple to do. So we can actually do that with, with Blackbird here. So let me go in, I'll create another um, order set here and we'll go into the stop losses here. And let me just, um, let's see, I'll just create a simple, you know, 10 tick stop loss. And I'm getting an echo from somebody. Nice. Um, and let's see here, let's go and create a trailing rule here. So I'll create a custom trailing rule. And then I want to add a trailing rule like so. And so you're looking for a doji condition, right? So that would be the trigger, the trigger conditions here. So let's go into here and we want to do, we want to find, um, we can do price versus indicator or let's see. No, it wouldn't be an indicator value. Yeah, so we're going to do uh, price versus indicator. And so what I can do is input A is going to be the closing price of the bar. Input B, I'm going to change that back over to price and grab the open price. So there we go. So if the closing price equals the open price, right, that's what a doji is. Pretty simple, straightforward. Um, and so we just need to change the mode here. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? Yeah, we don't have an equals. Um, yeah, this price versus indicator is actually kind of designed for, as it's kind of the name implies, it's designed for comparing, you know, one indicator to another to see if it's above or below. So we don't actually have a direct equals. Um, you can use the candlestick indicator actually built into an indicator as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jeremy, for reminding me of that. Right. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, I wanted to kind of illustrate here that, yeah, if you want to look for more specific um, kind of candlestick patterns here, I could go into indicator value, and we can see here the ATR is kind of the default one, and I can go in here, open this up. Right here, you can see a list of all of Ninja Traders indicators. Uh, I even have right, some of Fat Tail's indicators on here too, listed under Lizard indicators. But if we go down here, uh, candlestick patterns. There we go. So we could use Ninja's candlestick pattern. Um, and let's see, pattern. Let's see. There we go. Doji. So I could select that and oh, the menu closed down on me. Let's get this open back up. There we go. So, yep, so I could select the doji pattern. Um, and of course, you know, the great thing about using an indicator to find your patterns, you know, is you can have some adjustments here. And of course, uh, the candlestick pattern has this trend strength to, you know, to control this, how, uh, I guess, how tight your doji is, um, something like that. So, um, let's see. Yeah, so there's a, the doji using the candlestick pattern. And then down here, uh, let's see. It's going to have, a, yeah, the candlestick pattern, it's, it's going to generate a value of, of uh, I think, positive one, right? So for a long trade and a short trade, let's see here, let's set these both to actually greater than or equal. Actually, no, they just both need to be greater than zero. I could just leave them at zero. You know, no need to overcomplicate this. So there we go. So if the indicator outputs a value greater than zero, then we know a doji was found, right? Um, like so. And then the last and final step, all right, is we just want to flatten the position just like that. All right, so there we go. It's so only took, you know, basically two steps. We um, we brought in our candlestick pattern indicator, uh, right, as the trigger condition. And then the action is where we tell Blackbird, you know, what do we want to do with that stop loss? Well, we're going to use it to, we're going to flatten the position. And there we go. So you'll, you know, you'll discover that, yeah, most things are 
very simple, you know, and easy to implement into Blackbird. So, all right. Um, a quick question here that uh, um, Richard's asking uh, if he's, he's, got, he's got two computers, a home one and a mobile one, uh, if both will be licensed with our software with, uh, and the answer is yes, we, we allow two installations, uh, which can be switched up at any time. Uh, and if that's not sufficient, you can always talk to us and we do, we do um, sell additional seats for a very reasonable price. Yeah, we definitely believe that, you know, if you're a trader, you always should have a backup computer, right? So we give you a, another activation for your backup computer. Um, you know, it's just you know, when you're trading with computers, always have that backup ready to go. So, yeah. All right, that seems to do it for the questions so far. Uh, okay. Hi right, guys, uh, thank you for the webinar, the information, and for spending some time with us this evening. Yep, thank you, Terry. Thanks for inviting us here. Glad to be here, guys. Yeah, thanks. It's, it's been a pleasure finally uh, be able to present in front of uh, an audience from Futures.io. It's been a long time coming for us. Yeah. All right. And again, just remember, if you have any uh, questions afterwards. Yeah, of course, you can always email us or you can jump into our Friday workshop here and ask your questions live there, guys. So, cool. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming.